think we've got enough folks that we can go ahead and hit the ground running. So first we'll do some introductions. Um, thanks so much for joining us for our session. Here today we'll talk about um, novice employee listening. How do you quickly and easily stand up a survey listening program? Um, how do you take what you've got and advance it and continue to grow? So um, first we'll do some introductions to the folks we have on the phone today. My name is Ellen Lovell. I'm a senior consultant here at Perceptics. Um, I'm excited to introduce our co-host, Jen Molinaro, and I'll let her introduce herself as well. Great. Right. So it's great to be with all of you. So as, as Ellen said, I'm Jen Molinaro, the VP of Talent Management for Contour Brands. If you've never heard of Contour Brands, that would not surprise me, but we own uh, the Wrangler and Lee uh, Jean brands as well as Rock and Republic. So you probably know us better through our brands. Uh, and we're a relatively new independent organization. So excited to share a little bit more about our journey with you today. Thanks, Jen. We also have Megan Cooksley and Molly Gillespie on the phone with us. They'll help facilitate questions. This is um, perhaps different than some of the other sessions that you've joined in that we wanna encourage questions and conversation. We'll have a discussion toward the end where we can share ideas, ask questions um, and help learn from one another. So um, with that, we'll move into kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what we're hoping to get across today. So first, um, you know, you see the word crawl up here. It's, it's a little bit of a cold open. When we talk about crawl in this session, we really mean that novice experience. So how do we take you similar to some of the other session themes from a crawl to a walk to a run in your journey as um, a client listening strategy? So today, what we're going to focus on specifically is that crawl piece. So how do you stand up a program like this? What are the things you need to be considering? Um, you know, how can you get HR to focus on this as an initiative that matters and focus on employee experience? Um, you know, there may be some people analytics focused roles around the organization, but there may not be some centralized ones. Um, that may be one of the considerations of defining what we mean by crawl. Um, data may not be as established as a core decision maker. Instead, we may lean on experience, seniority, um, you know, leaders who have been around for a long time and what they've seen work um, as those decision makers for the practices and decisions that happen. We'll also see sometimes that data interpretation is overwhelming, especially if you don't have some of those support experts yet within your organization. We also will see that, you know, sometimes clients will typically lean on the vendor to do a lot of the implementation and results. If there are results, you know, we've seen some clients in their very early days try and keep that as a small effort so they can focus on a few good things to do. Um, and then we also see, you know, results may not typically be integrated beyond the survey practice itself. So you give the engagement a survey or you give the specific survey, but it's not necessarily integrated into goal setting or performance or, um, you know, any of the other aspects of the employee life cycle that we want, we want to work toward. Um, and then the other thing that we see when we mean crawl is there may be some infrequent surveys or listening that happens. Maybe it's every year, maybe it's every other year, maybe it's when you can get the band together to be on board to do that. So um, hopefully today we can talk through some of the benefits of focusing on um, crawl and how to develop it out into its most mature um, self and then from there move forward uh, beyond into the walk and run phase. So when we talk about the value of crawl, um, you know, how do we take your organization to the next level? Do you, are you currently in an organization where there's a culture that encourages employees to share their voices and feel heard? Have there been tough learnings in the past that maybe inhibit that from being as easy as it could be? Um, do you identify areas of emphasis and ask related questions? So for example, this year, we've seen a lot of questions related to employee well-being. Um, how do you move from remote learning or working to, you know, on-site working or vice versa? Those types of questions, diversity and inclusion questions, how do you target those areas of emphasis? And how do you also use employee listening as a means of communicating what's important to individuals? So, you know, 
in, in grad school, we used to talk about assessment as intervention. So even just talking about these topics, whether or not any action comes from them, provides some benefit in and of itself. We also think of, you know, how do you hold leaders accountable for their team results? So this isn't something that's just coming from the top. It's not just coming from senior leadership. We have ownership at the lower levels that then um, help employees understand that leaders are involved, invested, want to continue to improve. And then from that, you know, going further and beyond into action planning. We also see, um, you know, leveraging tools and technology like what we offer here at Perceptics for that streamlined data collection. So you don't have a survey monkey survey over here and one that somebody sent out something somewhere over here. How can we really streamline that process, get everyone behind the same, um, you know, objectives and goals so that everything is as simple as it can be. There's not a lot of bureaucracy behind it. Um, and then, you know, how do we integrate demographic information to understand differences? So not only are we asking questions in a kind of unidimensional way where we understand responses, but then we can dig even deeper into um, what groups are impacted most. Are there certain work roles or, you know, diversity groups, minority groups who have been impacted in a different way? And we need to not only understand how their experiences are different, but also um, action plan related to those groups. We also see value in large scale reporting. So from that, we mean, how do you get managers access to all of their results at the same time or in a, in a planful way so that we can then have an expectation that they're accountable for their results through action planning and continuing to improve the experience of their team members. And then we also see that there's, you know, value in results to make decisions at the higher level. So once all of the action planning has happened, once the results have been cascaded throughout your organization, how can we then get a seat at the table as an HR function or a DNI function or wherever you may sit to say, this is powerful information we should be using to make decisions as an organization. So Jen, I'll pause there. Is there anything else you want to add here in terms of um, what has worked for you at Contour in, in establishing the ROI of the survey practice? Yeah, so I, I mean, this, this list really resonates with me, and I could give examples for, for each one of these, um, but just, just a, a little tiny bit of context, and then I'll, I'll comment on, on just a few things. Um, when I when I say we're a newly independent company, but you you hear Wrangler and Lee as the the brands uh, that we represent. Certainly, the brands have been around for hundreds of years, um, and so we have been actually uh, talking about ourselves as a hundred year old startup. Um, and and when I think about our engagement survey and our, our approach to our listening strategy. Uh, that's really a startup piece of our business rather than some of the legacy things that we've brought with us, with us through the spinoff. Um, and so what's exciting is that we do have an opportunity to start fresh, to start at this kind of crawl stage and then really inform how we want to go about it. Um, but I think this year in particular, and you, you have this embedded, gave us a platform to stand on uh, to say that this, this piece of what we're doing in terms of our talent strategy and our listening strategy is incredibly important. Um, and so one of the things that we, we leveraged this year that I think really helped us uh, to move into this stage quickly is, the, is our focus on inclusion and diversity. Uh, and so as part of our uh, strategy build for inclusion and diversity, we knew that this needed to be a part of it and truly embedded into it. Uh, and then we communicated that to the whole organization uh, prior to, I think, even choosing Perceptics as our, as our partner. So really starting with that high level accountability and tying it to some of the other um, you know, talent systems or, or uh, processes was really important for us and I think gave us a, a really great emphasis um, and support for moving this forward. So, it, but we've started, I mean, all of these things are incredibly true as well as what you had on the, on the previous slide, uh, right? Too many uh, survey capabilities within the organization, confusing some of our audience in terms of what we were doing. 
uh, and certainly not necessarily having the accountability kind of baked in uh, for managers as well. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but um, yeah, just a little context, but this, I mean, the, what you have here really, really resonates. Wonderful. Well, we'll jump next into, you know, is your organization ready to move forward? Do you have the right parts and pieces in place to jump feet first into this experience and, and continue to move forward? Um, here are some things that we've identified at Perceptics that we see commonly among our clients um, as either hurdles they have to cross or um, things that have set them up for success. So first we talk about, do you have a centralized data system? Do you have an HRIS system? That in and of itself is going to help streamline the results, make sure your data are clean and that um, it's something we can cons consistently update so that when we get into those more complex, you know, cutting the data certain ways, understanding populations, we can do that in the most effective manner. We also see, um, you know, has leadership support been there from the beginning and, and do they help engage at a deeper level? So do you have that buy-in from the stakeholders that matter? Is this something that's going to fall on deaf ears or can you establish that value within the leadership so that the, they are sponsoring this initiative with you? Another thing that we see is, do you have a dedicated team that can help make decisions and link to your organizational priorities? Because the more that we can establish and identify for others, the value add of doing this practice and how it trickles down and impacts other priorities, the more buy-in that we'll continue to have. We also hope to see an interest in using analytics tools. Um, whether or not you have the skill set yet, I think that's something that we hope to see um, a hunger for and um, you know, desire to learn more about. We also see sharing data and insights broadly throughout the organization. So is your organization centralized in its communication strategy? Is that something that you can get buy-in from that team on um, and make sure that the right um, employee listening strategy information is getting cascaded down to the individuals? Um, the next thing we see is, can you, you know, kind of in addition to that, do you have more frequent and timely data gathering? So is this an every other year thing? You know, we would, we would hope to challenge you to listen more frequently and continue to, you know, be agile and react to the, the answers that you're getting in the survey so that you can make updates and then continue to check in with people. So um, these are the types of things that we want you to be asking yourself in terms of, is your organization ready to move forward? So we don't want to just ask you questions and not give you anything to, to, to stand on. So we've tried to talk through here, you know, what is successfully transitioning into this first stage of having a defined survey practice look like? Um, there's a few things we think are really critical. Having a strategy and a plan. So figuring out from the beginning to the end what you need to make this happen and be pulled off and then how you can iterate beyond that. We also feel that forming strategic partnerships and gaining that buy-in from the top is really critical. Um, that can make or break some of these survey practices. We also see developing basic data interpretation skills across HR and for leaders is really important. Um, we, we are equipped to help you with that in some ways, if that's something you're interested in. Um, but, you know, putting the tools in their hands and allowing them to own it at each level across HR and across the leadership is another way to gain buy-in. And then also evaluating how results will be re reported and to who. So what are the audiences, those critical audiences that will need to understand the narrative, help give input and you know, continue to modify and update what your priorities are based on what you're seeing. So, you know, just some quick, quick notes here at the bottom, who will participate in the survey? What kinds of data will you want to collect? Will all of your leaders be accountable? Will you start with a higher level um, priority where you say directors and above are going to model this for everyone and then next year we roll it out at a lower level? That kind of thing. What does that look like? Um, what 
business decisions can you help inform? So are there problems? Are there priorities? Are there um, other kind of timely questions that you can help answer by asking your employees and then offering recommendations? And then, you know, maybe most in, most importantly, who's responsible for this implementation, the analyses, the follow-up, how can we best partner with you to have the right stakeholders in the room to really push this towards success? So again, Jen, I'll pause here and see if there's any, um, you know, thoughts you have around this piece. Yeah, I guess I would add one question perhaps to, the, to that list, and then I'd be happy to share just a little bit about our, our story and kind of journey through some of these pieces too, if, if that's helpful. Um, but, but the one question I might, I might add to this is, is, are we ready to take action on whatever results we get back as well? And I, I think right, going out and asking is, 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 is a great thing so you know where you are. Um, but one of the things that I, I think I heard Sarah Johnson say in the fireside chat yesterday, which, which I thought was just brilliant, right, is, is there is no survey fatigue. It, it's, it's really about will the organization take uh, action on, on those results as well. And so I think as you, as you ask or, or think about, you know, what data are you collecting, are you also going to be willing to take action, right, on that, on that data um, that you get back to? But I, I, as I kind of mentioned on the previous slide, one of the things that really did help us to transition into uh, can be these best practices or, or bullet points here is having uh, the platform to stand on of inclusion and diversity. And so that really gets to having that strategy and plan. It was clearly embedded and connected to that practice. Um, we already at that point, and, and um, we, we started our, our journey on inclusion and diversity earlier this year, and then that was, of course, amplified by some of the events that, it, that occurred this summer um, and prior to the summer. Um, but we really leveraged that and kind of stepped into that space uh, full on, knowing that we wanted to make sure we were taking our, our listening and our engagement survey data and slicing it out by ethnicity and slicing it out by gender and other diversity metrics so that we could get uh, even deeper insight into where we might have those opportunities or areas of focus. Um, and so that was one of the key areas we knew we wanted to focus on. So linking it in that, in that really, really clear way um, I think was especially important. And then we had uh, uh, we have a very small team, um, so I have a one analytics person that just joined the team in December. So we're still very much building that capability. Um, but was what was great about partnering with Perceptics and and Ellen mentioned this is they they've been great partners in helping us to continue to elevate our game uh, in terms of being able to leverage and get insight out of. Uh, the information that we now have. And so you know, just being able to equip our HR business partners as well as equip uh, our talent team and equip our managers uh, in how to leverage and access and use this information very quickly, I think has been a, a, just a, a great win for us. Um, and then for the managers also continuing to build in that accountability, right? Making sure that we're, we're baking that in so not only through our IND strategy, but also then linking it to their performance plan. So all action plans should then get translated into performance. It's right? so just making sure that we're really building the story and building that connection through all of our talent systems so that we know, right, this is information we're going to leverage, we're gonna use, it'll be part of our decision making, uh, and managers are going to be accountable to making sure we, we respond as well. Um, so it's been a it's been a good really good journey, but I think all, you know, these bullet points really really resonate again, um, just because it does help you to think through, you know, how how do I link this to other things? How do I make sure I do have all of the right stakeholders and partners in the process too? Thanks, Jen. So I think. Um... I'll run through some examples we have here and then Jen, I'll lean on you again to, to give some more examples of, you know, what are some real life applications like you've been mentioning about clients that crawl? And I think that's such a silly uh, visual for me, clients that crawl, but um, you know, 
are they, they're asking employees about topics they care about. So we've, we've touched on this. Is it diversity, equity, and inclusion? Is it well-being? Is it remote work? Um, you know, do you have a specific initiative internally that you want to ask targeted questions about? Do you want to ask about psychological safety or, you know, safety in general at work? Are there other topics that make sense for your organization that your employees are going to say, oh, wow, I never thought they would ask me about this and offer their opinions. We also um, see clients having executive uh, support and communication about their survey value. So um, we certainly can uh, collect this on the, on the fly and, and, you know, show, put our proof in the pudding and show in the results how this is meaningful. But if we can get proactively in front of those executives, help them understand the utility and ROI, um, it makes for a much easier process and, and continued growth beyond this first year. We also see some clients that are crawling are moving from paper surveys to all the virtual. You know, there are manufacturing populations, there are um, populations in other countries where technology is just difficult to get on site, um, where, you know, it's tough to have just enough to pause everyone from their daily work versus, you know, some of our technology companies where every person has a personal laptop, you know, those are different challenges that we see. So for those populations, how do we encourage them to move toward virtual collection of their data results or their survey results? Um, and we have a lot of different ways that we've done this with our clients. So in QR codes, having kiosks in a break room, having SSO linked directly to um, a login for them, having a specific unique link, those are all ways that we've seen them pivot toward having a virtual experience um, that's less time consuming, probably less expensive, um, and also just streamlines the process and ensures that um, you know, everything is being collected in the same uniform manner. We also see clients that crawl um, gaining that buy-in and trust from employees through that targeted action planning. So a lot of my clients who um, either have very new employee listening programs or maybe had employee listening programs a while back um, with different folks who um, didn't have a great experience. They, you know, for whatever reason, trust was lost, you know, managers didn't feel accountable, whatever the things were, and they're rebuilding that trust. Um, and some of that is through, like I said, showing that end result, showing that leaders are accountable and, and have performance related objectives they're working toward. And then I think the last thing I'll mention here is how do you integrate those important demographics? We alluded to this earlier. Um, do you have individuals in certain business units, in certain teams? Do you have um, you know, high potential employees? Do you have um, groups that maybe you're concerned about that you wanna keep an eye on? How can we make sure we're proactively including that information on the data file on the front end so that when you get into your reporting platform and when we do an executive presentation, we can highlight that group and compare them across other individuals who might be having a different experience. Um, and that way we can help understand, does their action planning need to be different? Is this something we should be celebrating um, and leveraging more broadly throughout our organization? So it helps kind of do that internal research for your for your groups and see what's working and what's not. Anything you wanna add here, Jen? Yeah, I, I will just comment on a few uh, a few things that we did is we we set up our survey uh, our engagement and we did a we did a massive organization wide census survey uh, just about six weeks ago or so now um, and so you know fresh fresh off the press if you will but I I will say it, it has been incredibly helpful to be able to dive into uh, some of those topics that you have like diversity and and for us we actually put that on the front page of uh, everybody's dashboard. So as managers are coming into the portal, we want to make sure that they see that front and center. It is important to us as an organization. Uh, they should have quick visibility into those results right away. Um, we also, of course, want to know how, how our employees are feeling in terms of our response to COVID and the pandemic globally this year. Um, not only that, but the workload and the burnout and the, and the stress uh, that has come along with that and the mental well-being as well. 
Um, skipping down to that third one, we, we did have this, this challenge for us this year. So traditionally, and when we were part of the previous organization, we actually, there's a couple of pieces to this. One is our supply chain uh, always did paper pencil uh, survey, always. Uh, just the, the nature of the work that they do doesn't allow them to have that easy access to technology. And so that was, a, that was a big challenge. And we actually went into this fall thinking that we were going to be doing paper pencil for this engagement survey. Um, and then opted not to, and opted not to for a lot of reasons, one of them just being safety, right, and handling. But another, because we didn't have a lot of people in some of those uh, locations. And so we did need to find some other ways to get to them. Um, one of the things that I think did work really well for us this year is we, we did use QR codes, and we actually sent out a postcard uh, to all of our U.S. employees. We didn't do that globally. Um, we could have, and, and uh, maybe we should have, but at least for our U.S. colleagues, uh, we sent out a postcard to their home with a QR code, uh, landed on their, on, in their mailbox, I think, the day before we're going live with the survey. So. Uh, pretty timely in terms of getting them into the survey, uh, and it's also just super simple and easy for them to do. It makes it very convenient. Um, the last thing I'll say is, is regarding those demographics. You know, we we had uh, we have a lot of learning, and and I think one of the one of the points you had on an earlier slide is even though we have uh, an HRIS and we have centralized data and and reporting on our population, it was an inherited. Uh, kind of database, if you will, from our previous company, which makes it a little, um, a little messy for us, which is one of the reasons why we actually really couldn't leverage previous survey data. Um, but for us, it, the, the system doesn't have perhaps all of the tools or technology or the, the fields in it that we would actually want to cut our data by. Um, so while we leveraged that and pushed that to, uh, to Perceptics, we, we found out very quickly that we wanted to make sure we could cut our population by uh, things like employee resource groups. Well, we don't have any designation in our HRIS for employee resource groups, so building that into the, the cut of the data. Um, similar with just the levels, the way that we, we talk about levels within our, our HRIS is very different than the way we kind of think about levels within the organization. So wanted to shift that view. Um, and I'm sure there are going to be continual things that we're learning and that we want to take slices of um, and get into the into the data uh, in that way as well. But just trying to think through that and having the right partners um, to really you know brainstorm with and think through what are those different slices? How do we want to make sure we're looking at the data? And that's one of the things I'd say just overall. Um, and I think you have this executive support. I think executive support. I will say beyond just HR, executive support is really, really important. It, it, it's one thing to have your CHRO send out the, the communication. It's another to have your CEO do it. Um, and we were lucky enough to have that support this year. Um, he, not only did he send out some, some emails, but also a little video talking about the importance uh, of participating. So that really helped. But I'd say I'd extend that even beyond just executive support. Um, and for us as a global organization with multiple different population needs, we really made sure that we had a sponsorship and support uh, from stakeholders around the world. So that meant from the RFP process to our demonstrations to actually helping us make some of the decisions uh, in terms of implementation as well. Um, so leveraging that internal stakeholder group and those right partners internally makes a huge difference. And that actually is the only way we were able to move from paper surveys to 100% digital this year. As my, my supply chain HR colleague was arm in arm with me this whole time, um, he was pretty resistant, I'd say, a couple of months ago to, to moving in this direction, and rightfully so for, for his population. Um, but started to warm up to the idea. Perceptic certainly helped to under, you know, explain how it would work and how other clients have done this. Um, and then we, we did leverage kiosks and QR codes and, again, some other creative ways to try to get to that audience and, and ended up with exceeding our expectations on response rates, 
uh, from our supply chain folks. So it was really excited to see that. Um, but it does, it takes that internal, you know, connection and stakeholder group to be aligned, I think, to, to get there. And especially on your first one, uh, to get there so quickly. So thank you, Ellen. All right, so um, I think we've probably alluded to several of these things, but um, you know, when we start thinking about maybe you're maybe you're here, maybe you're in Jen's shoes and you you've kind of mastered some of this crawl piece, and next year we'll be looking to how do we continue to grow? How do we continue to up the ante and learn more and have more capability? Um, here are some ways that we think you know, you can continue to do that. So how do you transform your surveys from just activities to listening opportunities um, to hearing what employees think um, and, and what they have to say? Um, this may happen in organizations that shift their focus to identifying those actionable insights and reaping the rewards. So, you know, some things that I've seen just off the cuff are, you know, how do you personalize the, the action planning, actionable insights so that they're more related to your organization. Maybe that's directing them to internal resources on your intranet or um, you know, identifying some programs that are happening in your organization that you want people to be able to leverage. Um, some signs of this stage may be, you know, like Jen just emphasized, I think we keep harping on it because it is so critical. How do you gain that seat at the table strategically um, and make sure that you're linking to those business goals so that not only are we helping benefit the employees, but we're also establishing that value to those executive stakeholders um, and being included in those conversations. So not just, you know, making requests and, and having a response, but also being a partner and being involved in that. Um, and then this last one, you know, it's probably a challenge for all organizations to some extent. I, I don't know that this is exclusive to this group, but no more spreadsheet wrangling. So how can we streamline our reports, make sure that things are consistent and that our metrics are captured in a way that we're investing prior to our survey. So when that time comes, you can send a beautiful data file and it comes over clean and we know that everything's right and there's data integrity um, so that when leaders get scores, they're clear and they understand them, there's not exceptions. Anything else, Jen, you'd think about here that's on top of mind? Um, not, I don't think so. I think these are, I think these are, these are great. And, and I do, I, what you just said, the very last piece, I think is really, really important in terms of the, the, the spreadsheets and trying to get it right before you, before you go and, and launch. Um, and luckily enough, uh, the, the analytics expert on my team and I, I have enough experience with our data that six months gave us enough experience to know what to look for, where to dig in and, and validate some of the data before we turned it over. Um, but that can often be a um, kind of a, just, yes, a time drain for sure. So I think that's a really important point. Great. So before we jump in and see, you know, what questions we have, what other experiences you all in the audience would like to share, we did just want to um, let you know about another session that's happening called Innovation for the Way Forward People Analytics. So today we've talked really about the practical benefits of, you know, initiating and rolling out a a novice employee survey listening program. However, there's a whole other um, opportunity within our platform to learn what the capabilities are, to understand what types of projects can be done, whether that's you know linking to other outcomes, being able to have predictive models, new tools, all the fun stuff that comes from our product team. So if you'd like to learn more about that, um, Alex Aguilar and Brett Wells are both um, presenting some sessions on that. So please look for that in your schedule. So I think now we'll open it up to you all and, and we'll lean on you to kind of offer us what questions you have, what um, best practices and learnings that you have. And we'll start with, you know, what kind of challenges have you faced as you prepare to begin this em employee listening journey? And, you know, what kind of successes have you found?
It looks like someone is trying to speak, but I may be mis misunderstanding. I can go. Can you hear me? This is Amy Clemens from Pentair. Hi, Amy. Thanks. Yes. So probably the one thing that sits on my mind is having the internal resources or structure to support these programs. And we're, we're tiny um, in terms of uh, our, where we are in our crawl to, I think we're crawling just to novice is probably a good way of describing us. We also have um, support or responsibilities for culture and inclusion and diversity. So Jen, it makes a ton of sense that it's all interconnected, but we don't have a robust team and we don't have um, people analytics capability. So I'm just curious if there are thoughts around organizations and how we might, recommendations on how we might get or gain more intelligence in our, in our small little space right now. Yeah, so I think the things that come to my mind are, um, you know, do you have anyone who deals in HRIS? Like, is there even a person who, um, you know, does the, the beginning phases of entering that information when employees are hired? And if you can learn from that group and maybe create your own expertise, if you will, in that process, I think that might be a helpful way. Um, another option that I think we see with some clients is if the data either doesn't exist or you're not able to find it in a clean enough way, how else can we learn to access that information? Sometimes that means including demographic questions in your survey, and that's certainly something that we do and have done for certain um, specific, you know, questions. The only uh, difference there is, you know, it's up to the employee to respond and offer us that information. Yeah, and just to just to relate to that, um, I, there's one talent analytics person uh, on our on our team and me <laughs> that, that supports this. And so I think one of the things that's been really helpful, and we knew going into uh, this implementation, is that we ne we needed a partner who was going to help us and and be with us through this entire journey. Um, so that was really that was just important, and it was it was a must have in terms of who who we were working with through this. So we we asked for a, a project manager to to really lead us through this from the from Perceptix, um, and and we we did we were guided uh, through this all along the way. Um, so that was really really helpful. And then of course we're we're learning a lot as we're as we're doing this our first time. Um, and we're making sure that on some of the other components that are perhaps outside of the, the pure analytics, that we're, we're doing some education and some upskilling where we can. Um, I would say broadly, an analytics is, is of course a, a key topic uh, and skill set across the organization that we're thinking about and considering. And, and the beautiful thing is I think we have really great talent within the organization who are motivated towards that, uh, who like analytics. And so you may end up finding you know, talent and uh, the opportunity to bring some uh, different people onto the team that maybe you wouldn't have thought of before, maybe not in HR analytics, uh, but in analytics to, to just help continue to, to grow that skill set too. That's a great point, Jen, and it, it makes me think of, you know, kind of the broader things that we're learning um, in our, you know, organizational psychology consulting world that we live in, which is, you know, this skills marketplace. How can we continue to not only upskill our employees, but get them breadths of of experience. And this might be a really easy win if it's a need you have and you can establish some cross-functional collaboration with other individuals throughout the organization. Does that help, Amy? It sure does. Thank you both very much. Absolutely. So we'll keep moving unless anybody else has any questions. Um, We'd love to know, how did you encourage others to move forward in standing up a survey program? Um, and then, you know, with that, do you have any lessons that you've learned that could benefit others?
I can offer um, a lesson that I think I've seen learned um, in terms of kind of standing up a program like this with a couple of clients that I've had. Um, and one is really around, um, and I know we've talked about it, but um, kind of the beauty and utility of showing the results in and of themselves and showing the powerfulness that comes from those to the executive population who may or may not have seen it before. Um, I've seen such a peaked interest in that group specifically this year with some of my newer, you know, more novice clients where, um, you know, they're just so intrigued and didn't know that was a capability. And so just getting that line of sight for them early on so that they understand what that benefit is. And then, you know, in turn, it's kind of a beautiful cycle where they continue to support you as well. I know we've just got a couple minutes left, so I may jump some jump to the end. Um, you know, in terms of what is, if there was one thing you wish you knew before you began this journey, what would it be? And Jen, I may even uh, pin you on this one first and let you share what you wish you had known. Yeah. So, so for me, it was it, it would probably be all of the other things that were going to happen during the two weeks <laughs> that we were launching the survey, uh, right? So, so we, we were doing some um, technology upgrades and some imaging cutover that happened to impact our kiosks at the exact time we had the survey uh, of running. Um, there was uh, our, our benefits enrollment was happening during that same time. Um, and so there was, there was just, there were just some other, uh, other things that, that I think we wish, we wish we would have known. Um, and so that just something to think about is what else is happening systemically across the organization, or that you're asking of the employees at the same time to give them the space uh, that they might need to really focus on what, what you need from them at that time. Thank you. And I think yeah, we are coming, go ahead. I was just going to say, this is Denise Domian, and I would just reiterate what Jen said. I think that has been a challenge at times in our organization where everybody seems to be wanting to get feedback at the same time, mm -hmm. and then you feel like you're just inundating them, and it really dilutes the results that you get. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> really planning, and if you have somebody who um, is in charge of kind of that calendar um, from a communication standpoint, just evaluating timing um, and, and being really thoughtful about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're planning for 2021. So our, what's next for our organization is a 2021 calendar of all of those types of things, for sure. It, but it is, it is challenging when, you, when you're trying to, to think about, well, what is IT doing versus uh, our brands versus HR. So it can be a lot to align on. Absolutely. Well, I know we are um, pretty much at time. So any last comments, questions, please feel free to stay on the line and we can answer those. Um, I will just say, you know, we're so appreciative of everyone who has joined us. We hope you've learned something new and um, I think we also, you know, offer any feedback, feel free to reach out to us and, and we'd be happy to take it. So thank you so much. And I'll offer if anybody wants to connect on LinkedIn or just continue the conversation, I'm happy to, to share our experiences as well.